motor effect is the name given to the phenomenon that a current carrying conductor experiences the force due to the presence of a magnetic field. Unless otherwise stated, conventional current is used in this topic to describe electric current. Conventional current is an artifact of history and came about before the role of electrons as the carriers of current was known. Conventional current assumes that the electrical current is carried through a conductor in the form of positive charges. As you can see in the diagram, conventional current flows from positive to negative. Charged particles moving through a conductor experience a force due to an external magnetic field, and this force is transmitted to the conductor. The conductor carrying the current experiences a force distributed along its length equal to the sum of the forces on the individual moving charges within it. The force is due to the interaction of the external magnetic field and the fields produced by the charges moving in the conductor. In terms of conventional current, the magnetic field around a conductor, where the current is flowing into the page, as is shown in the middle diagram, is clockwise. The magnetic field lines tend to spread out so that they are an equal distance apart and as far apart as possible in the ground state which is the most stable and lowest energy state of the magnetic field, and this is represented in the first diagram in the form of a uniform magnetic field. When the magnetic field surrounding a current carrying conductor is combined with a uniform magnetic field, the resultant field shown in the third diagram is produced. The magnetic field lines are compressed where they are oriented in the same direction, and spread out where they are in the opposite directions. This results in a force at right angles to both the current and the external magnetic field. The force experienced by a current carrying conductor is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field. As the stronger the magnetic field, the greater will be the force experienced by each charged particle moving within the conductor. The force is also directly proportional to the number of charged particles moving through the conductor, or the current, as the force on the conductor is the sum of the forces experienced by the charged particles. The force on a current carrying conductor is also directly proportional to the length of the conductor in the magnetic field, as a longer conductor carrying a given current will have more moving charges within it than a shorter conductor carrying the same current. In the diagram, the force on the conductor is represented by the large blue arrows at the top. The magnetic field is depicted by the crosses, which represent a uniform magnetic field oriented into the page. The current is represented by the blue dots with the plus symbol on them, and the small arrows next to each of the dots represents the direction of motion of the electric charges. The first diagram depicts a situation in which the current is I, the magnetic field strength is B, and the length of the conductor subject to the magnetic field is L, generating a force F on the conductor. If we double the current, as is shown in the second diagram, to 2I, but leave the magnetic field strength unchanged at B, and the length of the conductor remains L, the force on the conductor, under these circumstances, will be 2F, so twice the initial force. The third diagram shows a situation in which the current and the length of the conductor are both the same as in the first diagram, but in this case the magnetic field strength has been doubled. Once again, the force on the conductor is doubled. The final diagram shows a situation in which the current and the magnetic field strength are both the same as they were in the first diagram, but in this case the length of the conductor subject to the magnetic field has been doubled. Once again, the force acting on the conductor is doubled. The force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field also depends on the angle of the conductor to the external magnetic field. If the conductor is parallel to the external magnetic field, as is shown in the first diagram, there is no net force on the conductor. The greatest force is produced when the conductor is oriented relative to the external magnetic field, as is shown in the second diagram. 
The magnetic field due to the charges moving through the conductor is shown in blue. Underneath the conductor it is shown as blue crosses representing a magnetic field oriented into the page. Above the conductor it is represented by blue dots indicating a magnetic field coming out of the page. In both diagrams the external magnetic field is represented by black crosses indicating an external magnetic field oriented into the page. For a current carrying conductor oriented at some angle theta to the magnetic field we can resolve the current vector into a component at 90 degrees to the magnetic field and a component parallel to the magnetic field. It is only the vector component that is oriented at 90 degrees to the magnetic field that experiences the force due to the presence of the magnetic field. This component, labelled as I90, is equal to I sine theta. Calculating the motor effect. Mathematically, the force on a current carrying conductor due to a magnetic field is given by the equation F equals B I L sine theta, where B is the magnetic field strength in Tesla, I is the current in the conductor in amps, L is the length of the conductor subject to the magnetic field in meters, and theta is the acute angle between the current direction and the direction of the magnetic field. The left hand rule. There are several different versions of this rule, using either the left or right hands with different parts of the hand representing different components of the force, current and magnetic field direction. The important thing is to stick to one version and the version that you find most memorable. The classic left hand rule, which is illustrated, has the thumb representing the force, F, the index finger representing the magnetic field direction, B, and the middle finger representing the current direction, I. This can be remembered as FBI. Summary. Conventional current is the movement of positive charges and flows from positive to negative. The force on a current carrying conductor is directly proportional to the current, the magnetic field strength and the length of the conductor subject to the magnetic field. The force on a current carrying conductor is also directly proportional to the sign of the angle between the current direction and the direction of the magnetic field. Mathematically, the force on a current carrying conductor due to the presence of a magnetic field is given by the equation F equals B I L sine theta, where B is the magnetic field strength in Tesla, I is the current in the conductor in amps, L is the length of the conductor subject to the magnetic field in meters, and theta is the acute angle between the current direction and the direction of the magnetic field. The direction of the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field is given by the left hand rule.